Detective realizes the mum is actually the killer. The Strange Case of Megan Cordy In August 2018, the small town of Yamhill County, Oregon, witnessed an evening that would unravel into a mysterious and tragic tale. The protagonist, 27-year-old Megan Cordy and her mother, Jennifer Weathers, attended a family friend's wedding at Heiser Farms, an idyllic venue nestled in the rural expanse of Dayton. Little did they know that what began as a night of dancing and celebration would soon turn into a perplexing enigma. Megan, a vivacious and caring soul, was accompanied by her three-year-old daughter, Gia, who added joy to her world. The family dynamics took a dark turn, as alcohol played a significant role in the events that transpired. Witnesses at the wedding observed Megan and Jennifer engaged in a heated argument, with Jennifer allegedly visibly intoxicated. As the night progressed, the tension between mother and daughter escalated, leading to a fateful decision that would alter their lives forever. The next chapter unfolds on the road home, with Megan, Jennifer, and Gia in the car. The argument continued, and at a certain point, Megan reportedly demanded to be let out. Jennifer, under the influence, obliged, and Megan stepped out into the night, leaving her phone and shoes behind. The details of what happened next became a conundrum shrouded in inconsistencies. Jennifer's version, as conveyed to authorities in the days that followed, painted a chilling picture. She claimed Megan angrily exited the car, and despite her attempts to locate her, Megan vanished into the darkness. Jennifer, seemingly oblivious to the severity of the situation, decided to head home, assuming Megan might have found an alternative way back. The morning after the ill-fated night, Jennifer woke up to a daughter who had not returned. Worried and uncertain, she decided to report Megan missing. The call to the non-emergency line revealed Jennifer's seemingly calm demeanor, but the mention of checking hospitals and jails raised eyebrows. As the search for Megan intensified, volunteers scoured the area where she was last seen, but there was no sign of her. As suspicions heightened, investigators turned their attention to Jennifer, starting with a search of her car. Megan's belongings were found, but a more ominous discovery awaited them. A clump of blonde hair with its roots intact, forcefully pulled out. Jennifer's subsequent questioning, even while hooked up to a lie detector, hinted at a darker reality. A physical altercation between mother and daughter, raising questions about the true nature of the events leading to Megan's disappearance. The story of Megan Cordy weaves a tapestry of unresolved mysteries, leaving a community grappling with the unanswered questions surrounding that fateful night in August 2018. Megan Cordy, born in December 1990 to Jennifer Weathers and Anton Cordy, was not just a missing person. She became a symbol of a chilling enigma that unfolded along the dark roads of Yamhill County. As she yanked my head back, I instinctively slammed on the brakes, my heart racing. In the heat of the moment, I yelled at her, desperately trying to comprehend the situation. What are you doing? Gia is in the car. I reach back, frustration and fear gripping me, and hit her arm in an attempt to make her release my hair. I could feel the tension escalating, and in that intense moment, I was unsure of what would happen next. M, the investigator, emphasized that only three people knew the details of that fateful day. The uncertainty lingers as to which parts of Jennifer's account are truthful, but one thing is evident. She places the blame squarely on Megan. While conflicts are common, Jennifer seems to absolve herself of responsibility, casting Megan as the instigator of the chaos. However, conflicting reports suggest that Megan was a devoted mother, making Jennifer's portrayal questionable. Jennifer's narrative is riddled with pauses, especially the long one following her statement about hitting Megan's arm. It raises doubts about the credibility of her recollection. The discomfort she displays during the pause hints at a lack of confidence or clarity in her version of events. If she were recounting facts confidently, why the prolonged silence? Jennifer continued, revealing the aftermath of the altercation. Megan, seemingly distressed, called her boyfriend Brendan for help. The details remain unclear, leaving unanswered questions about Megan's motivation for making the call. Was she worried about Jennifer's intoxicated state, driving with her daughter in the car? The complexity of the situation deepens as Jennifer's account lacks clarity and coherence. When pressed about the derogatory terms exchanged during the argument, Jennifer's responses are contradictory. Initially denying name-calling, 
she eventually admits that Megan does call her names. This contradiction raises suspicions about Jennifer's attempts to portray Megan negatively, especially when her daughter is missing. The focus on blame rather than concern for Gia's well-being adds to the perplexity of Jennifer's narrative. Finally, as Jennifer described the culmination of the incident, Megan threatened to get out of the car. Despite my insistence that she stay put, she opened the door while the vehicle was slowing down. The tense scene unfolds with unanswered questions about what prompted Megan's actions and the overall dynamics of their heated exchange. The story leaves us in suspense, yearning for clarity amidst the tangled web of conflicting accounts. One evening, Jennifer found herself in a bewildering situation. She had been driving with her daughter Gia when, unexpectedly, Megan, who was also in the car, jumped out. Shocked, Jennifer quickly stopped the car and got out, frantically searching for Megan. Despite calling her name repeatedly, there was no response, and Jennifer couldn't spot Megan anywhere. Panicking, Jennifer decided to turn the car around, thinking Megan might be heading in the opposite direction from where she jumped out. With the car's headlights illuminating the area, she continued calling Megan's name, but the search proved futile. Concerned for Gia's safety, Jennifer eventually returned to the car, where she was questioned about the speed of the vehicle when Megan jumped out. Jennifer clarified that she was almost at a complete stop, less than five miles per hour. As the narrative unfolded, the focus shifted to Gia's well-being. Jennifer recounted her efforts to find Megan, calling Burr, presumably someone close, without success. Throughout this ordeal, Gia was in the back seat, presumably witnessing the events unfold. Jennifer expressed worry about Gia witnessing Megan's behavior, and the questioning turned towards Megan's past actions, revealing that Megan had threatened to jump out of the car before. The story took a surprising turn when Jennifer was asked about the child's state during the incident. However, Jennifer could only respond with uncertainty, stating she didn't know what Gia was doing. This raised concerns, as Jennifer seemed more focused on Gia's emotional state than Megan's disappearance. Further questioning revealed that Jennifer had not attempted to call Megan during or after the incident. Jennifer explained that her priority was getting Gia home safely. Despite Megan's erratic behavior, Jennifer's lack of concern for Megan's well-being was evident. As the narrative progressed, Jennifer described Megan's erratic behavior in the past, including an incident at Megan's workplace. The conversation touched on Megan's unpredictable schedule, leading to a disagreement between the two. This added context painted a picture of Megan's emotional volatility. The story took a tragic turn with the discovery of Megan's lifeless body by joggers, far from the location Jennifer claimed she had jumped out of the car. The subsequent press conference revealed Megan's cause of death as blunt force trauma to the head, and authorities expressed suspicion about the circumstances leading to her demise. In the aftermath, Jennifer's credibility came into question as she failed a polygraph test and ceased cooperation with the authorities. The once confusing story surrounding Megan's disappearance turned into a mysterious and unsettling case, leaving more questions than answers. One evening, Jennifer found herself in a bewildering situation. She had been driving with her daughter Gia when, unexpectedly, Megan, who was also in the car, jumped out. Shocked, Jennifer quickly stopped the car and got out, frantically searching for Megan. Despite calling her name repeatedly, there was no response, and Jennifer couldn't spot Megan anywhere. Panicking, Jennifer decided to turn the car around, thinking Megan might be heading in the opposite direction from where she jumped out. With the car's headlights illuminating the area, she continued calling Megan's name, but the search proved futile. Concerned for Gia's safety, Jennifer eventually returned to the car, where she was questioned about the speed of the vehicle when Megan jumped out. Jennifer clarified that she was almost at a complete stop, less than five miles per hour. As the narrative unfolded, the focus shifted to Gia's well-being. Jennifer recounted her efforts to find Megan, calling Burr, presumably someone close, without success. Throughout this ordeal, Gia was in the back seat, presumably witnessing the events unfold. Jennifer expressed worry about Gia witnessing Megan's behavior, and the questioning turned towards Megan's past actions, revealing that Megan had threatened to jump out of the car before. The story took a surprising turn when Jennifer was asked about the child's state during the incident. However, 
Jennifer could only respond with uncertainty, stating she didn't know what Gia was doing. This raised concerns, as Jennifer seemed more focused on Gia's emotional state than Megan's disappearance. Further questioning revealed that Jennifer had not attempted to call Megan during or after the incident. Jennifer explained that her priority was getting Gia home safely. Despite Megan's erratic behavior, Jennifer's lack of concern for Megan's well-being was evident. As the narrative progressed, Jennifer described Megan's erratic behavior in the past, including an incident at Megan's workplace. The conversation touched on Megan's unpredictable schedule, leading to a disagreement between the two. This added context painted a picture of Megan's emotional volatility. The story took a tragic turn with the discovery of Megan's lifeless body by joggers, far from the location Jennifer claimed she had jumped out of the car. The subsequent press conference revealed Megan's cause of death as blunt force trauma to the head, and authorities expressed suspicion about the circumstances leading to her demise. In the aftermath, Jennifer's credibility came into question as she failed a polygraph test and ceased cooperation with the authorities. The once confusing story surrounding Megan's disappearance turned into a mysterious and unsettling case, leaving more questions than answers.